So first of all, when we're thinking about stem cells to treat muscular dystrophies, we're thinking of treating skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle is a voluntary muscle, or school, uh, as opposed to a, a cardiac muscle or smooth muscle, the muscles we use for posture or for movement. And in our body, there are over 600 muscles, and it's 40% of adult body weight. So it'd be extremely challenging if you're trying to treat a muscular dystrophy, as most of these affect uh, muscles body-wide, including the heart. So that's extremely challenging. Next, next one. So this cartoon shows what skeletal muscle is. So a skeletal muscle um, is, uh, is, 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 goes from a tendon to tendon. It's used for movement. Um, so muscle is innovated, it's got a vascular supply. And the muscle itself consists of bundles of very long single cells called muscle fibers. And each muscle fiber contains the contractile elements of skeletal muscle. So this is a very complex three-dimensional structure. And on the next slide, we can see a longitudinal section of skeletal muscle. So this is the muscle fiber, and these are the contractile elements and these are the nuclei of the skeletal muscles. So it's a very specialized structure for, for contraction. So on the next slide, you can see, although skeletal muscle, it's a very stable tissue, but it's able to regenerate following injury. These are cross sections, transverse sections. So in this case, the muscle is coming out towards you. So this is a muscle fiber, and it's surrounded by the connective tissue here in white. So this is a normal, non-injured mouse muscle. So if you inject the muscle with a, 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 a snake venom, the muscle is completely, almost completely destroyed. As you can see here, there's no visible muscle fibers here. But a day or so later, we can see the beginnings of newly regenerated muscle fibers. And this regeneration then continues with time after injury to almost completely regenerate the muscle. So because muscle regenerates, we know that it must contain a stem or precursor cell. So we can define a stem cell as a cell that can both give rise to differentiated tissue and can also self-renew, so that would give an almost endless supply of cells to replenish and replace the tissue during our lifetime. So because we're thinking of muscular dystrophies, the stem cell that we're interested in is the skeletal muscle stem cells. That's the next one. So this is a muscle fiber, and this tiny little cell here in green is a satellite cell, and it's located in a particular position on the fiber, under the basal lamina, which is shown here in red. So this tiny little cell, and there are very few of them on, on, on a muscle fiber, so this one cell has got the capacity um, to proliferate and then regenerate many hundreds of muscle fibers um, under the correct conditions. So it's an extremely potent um, muscle stem cell. <coughs> so the next slide shows an, a, another satellite cell on another fiber stained with a different antibody. So these tiny stem cells have got a huge potential to regenerate skeletal muscle. And so it could be really useful for, um, for treatment of muscular dystrophies. <coughs> so why are stem cells, could they be useful for treating muscular dystrophies? Well, a muscular dystrophy is it's a genetic disease, and it's characterized by muscle wasting. And of course, muscles, uh, muscles of, of, of muscular dystrophy patients, they do have stem cells. Um, and these try to regenerate, but they don't keep up with the muscle degeneration, so they're eventually lost. So the idea is, um, so all the cells of the patient contain the same genetic defect. But if we could get stem cells from a normal donor, these won't, um, these won't express the, the genetic defect. So the idea would be that if we could take stem cells from a normal donor and transplant them into dystrophic muscles, they'll divide within these muscles and fuse in a process similar to in development to make new muscle fibers. And in these new muscle fibers derived from the normal cells, the missing protein will be expressed, but these fibers won't have the same genetic defect. And the restored protein in these muscle fibers will prevent the muscle fiber from breaking down in the future. So this cartoon shows um, the possible stem cell transplantation. So as I said before, we could either take a stem cell from a normal person, grow it up in tissue culture, and then transplant it into a patient. So this is a good idea, but the problem is 
that these cells might be immunologically rejected by the patient. So they'd have to be immunosuppressed probably lifelong after the cell transplantation. The other idea was to take, is to take the patient's own stem cells and then it either insert, or re insert a normal gene or repair the defective gene, grow these cells up and then transplant them back into the patient. But of course, actually doing the genetic manipulation is quite a complicated process. So where are we now with our research? So we and others have done experiments to show that satellite cell stem cells from, um, from normal mouse muscle are efficient muscle stem cells but only when you transplant them directly into a muscle. Um, the problem is that um, stem cells lose their ability um, to regenerate muscle if you expand them a lot in tissue culture. So we need to better understand these processes in order to, to develop effective treatments for muscular dystrophies. However, um, there's great promise from a recent clinical trial um, done by um, a, a, a group in France, some of which, um, some of whom we collaborate with um, on, on different projects. Um, so in this clinical trial, they used, they, 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 would, they, they studied um, patients with oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy. And this is a very late onset muscular dystrophy, and it particularly affects um, the eye muscles and causes swallowing problems. So it's caused by a mutation in a particular protein. So in this clinical trial, they treated the patients by removing part of the pharyngeal muscle that uh, is interfering with um, the, the, the swallowing. And they took um, muscle cells or myoblasts derived from a non-affected muscle in that, in, from the patient. In, that case, in this case, it was a quadriceps muscle. And they grew these cells up in culture and transplanted them into the affected pharyngeal muscle. And the outcome of this uh, the clinical trial was an improvement in the patient's swallowing and quality of life. So even though these cells have been expanded in culture, they still seem to be effective. And this is extremely promising um, for future of work on stem cells um, to treat muscular dystrophies. So we've still got um, lots of work to be done and lots of pro uh, pro problems to, to overcome. We need to work on retaining um, the stem cell potential of muscle stem cells when we expand them in culture. Um, we're also working on a project funded by the Muscular Dystrophy Campaign now to look at the effect of the dystrophic um, muscle environment on either endogenous stem cells or on transplanted stem cells. So we need to work also on systemic delivery of stem cells so that they can be, um, so that they can be delivered body-wide to all the muscles. But, as in the OPMD clinical trial has shown, local delivery actually to one muscle of myoblasts um, does seem to be um, to, to, to work, but only treat those particular muscles. So, the next. so what we're doing at the moment, um, we've got a project in which we've taken um, stem cells from the muscles of a patient suffering from Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And in culture, we've infected these cells with a lentivirus. Um, and a lentivirus is a virus that can um, infect cells and can insert into the host genome. So all the progeny of those cells contains the gene. And the lentivirus can, uh, contained um, a particular, um, coded for a particular dystrophin protein, and as large as possible, a dystrophin gene, as large as possible to fit into the lentiviral vector. So these cells um, make muscle fibers expressing dystrophin when we transplanted them into a mouse mos model of muscular dystrophy. And these are green fibers, are fibers expressing dystrophin. So now we'd like to move on to a proof of concept clinical trial, um, transplanting the patient's own stem cells, are modified with a lentivirus coding for this dystrophin protein, in perhaps a small finger muscle of a Duchenne muscular dystrophy patient. But although you think this might be only a little thing in a later stage patient, this could be increase their quality of life um, quite remarkably, even though it's just a small muscle that's being treated. So the next, um, so really, as Marita said, I've been funded for an awfully long time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the muscular dystrophy campaign. In fact, when I was doing my PhD um, all those years ago, it was funded by the muscular dystrophy campaign. So uh, my colleagues and I were extremely grateful for funding um, the muscular dystrophy group in those days. 
So thank you very much for all your funding. It's really made a tremendous difference. Um, and the next slide shows some pictures of some of the people um, over the years that have contributed to the work and some of the pictures of the people in the lab. I haven't got some uh, pictures of, uh, of the latest people, but I must do that. So thank you very much.